Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 9 on drought and management, lecture number 37, today we will discuss about drought mitigation. So, some of the important topics covered in today's lecture include drought mitigation and management, drought warning and monitoring, mitigation and planning. So, key for keywords for today's lecture drought mitigation, management and planning. So, as we were discussing earlier, so drought is a major issue in many parts of the world and especially in watershed management, if you manage the, the watershed area with respect to water, land, vegetation, we can reduce the effects of drought. So, related to the drought in the last two lectures, we were discussing about the various aspects of droughts, then how to analyze the droughts and then uh, various related issues, consequences, all those things we were discussing in the last lecture. So, in today's lecture, we will be discussing mainly on the drought mitigation aspects. So, once say if we cannot stop the drought, but we can do many things to prevent the effects of droughts or we can re reduce the effects of uh, droughts. So, in that sense, uh, say mitigating droughts means taking actions in advance of drought to reduce its long term risk. So, we are doing many many things which will reduce the effects of the drought. So, this uh, involves a wide range of tools, policies, activities, plans and programs. So, uh, on a the government level central government or state governments or uh, various um, district level uh, we'll say we can have uh, many many plans, policies, activities uh, and programs so that the, the, the drought mitigation is uh, effectively can be implemented or the effects of droughts can be uh, reduced to, to certain extent. So, that way when we look into drought mitigation, the, the important components of a drought mitigation plan include, so prediction. So, we have to predict say whether there is any possibility of drought say for this particular year or few months ahead, uh, we have to predict. Then uh, we have to monitor, so the, we have to monitor the area say on a watershed basis or a district basis or the area basis, we have to monitor the various uh, the, the hydrologic parameters and uh, the water level in the reservoirs, then um, the, the agricultural aspects all those things we have to monitor and then see uh, how the how the drought will say whether it will be severe drought or moderate drought like that then we have to to study the impact uh, so we have to do an impact assessment so that way we have to see that uh, the 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 say with respect to the severity of the drought so what will be happening whether uh, there will be the agriculture crops uh, say will be destroyed or not whether the sufficient water will be available to the people or not so, this, this kinds of impact assessments uh, we have to do when we discuss about the drought mitigation. And then in that sense, say we can have we by using now the modern uh, tools like uh, remote sensing GIS, then hydrological modeling, then climatological modeling etcetera, we can have now uh, early warning systems. So, in many countries like United States, then um, say uh, uh, they have developed uh, early warning system, drought warning system. So, that from that uh, we can predict whether there is any possibility of droughts and then uh, accordingly we can go for uh, mitigation plans. Then uh, we have to come up with action plans to deal with the severity. So, once the drought come to the, the to the to the area. So, uh, say depending upon the severity whether it is uh, say mild, moderate or severe. So, what kind of action plans? So, say since we have to help the community, we have to help the people for, say there may be famine may be there, there may be water shortage may be there, there are so many issues will be there. So, how we can help the community, how we can um, uh, say uh, do various things so that the severity will be uh, reduced. So, that is the next step action plans to deal with the severity. Then comes the, the relief and responses. So, relief and responses means once the drought has already set on the area or that particular area, then uh, say the people or the, 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 the system needs uh, say various relief measures say like uh, there may be shortage of food, there may be shortage of water, 
so then uh, the, 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 the crop may have got destroyed, so various issues will be there. So, the as a uh, especially the government machinery either the, the federal system or the state governments or the district uh, administration. So, they have to give relief to the people through various means in terms of food products or money monetary wise or whatever way it is possible. So, that way uh, most of the time the, the system needs immediate responses and reliefs. So, that way the important components of a drought mitigation plans include prediction, monitoring, impact assessment, uh, early warning systems, action plans to deal with the severity and uh, relief and responses. So, now uh, within this context uh, let us look into say what kind of action plans are possible or as far as mitigation is concerned. So, mitigation plans uh, and programs and policies are implemented uh, say during and before droughts uh, to reduce the magnitude of uh, risk to human life, property and productive capacity. So, that way we can see that uh, say once say a drought warning system predicts there is a possibility of droughts. So, uh, say uh, before the drought started we can do many measures so that um, say like related to agriculture management or water management or the, the, the ecological management we can do many things and then during the drought uh, say uh, also uh, the, the, the system the, the government machinery or the, the disaster management uh, say bodies they can do many things uh, so that uh, to reduce the magnitude of risk to human life, property and then uh, the, 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 the flora and fauna of that particular uh, area. So, now say nowadays say instead of now just giving relief to the people now we, we are looking for mitigation measures in advance. So, that uh, the, the say the now the, the shift is uh, the public policy. So, we have to frame the policy in such a way that the drought relief uh, to say instead of say earlier times if we are giving so once the drought is set we are giving reliefs during the drought situation, but now we are looking for mitigation measures I mean say before the drought set in or say during the drought say various mitigation uh, measures. So, that way it is important for adapting say so that we say now we say we are all hearing about the climate change effects. So, we have to see whether say the, the effect of climate uh, say uh, the, the climate change effects will be uh, having uh, say the problems like uh, droughts kind situations. So, it is important for adapting to climate change, uh, then uh, restoring ecological uh, balances and uh, bringing development benefits to the people. So, that way uh, we have to put the uh, mitigation plans as far as the uh, drought management is concerned. So, now let us look say as far as drought mitigations are concerned say what are the important strategies possible. So, let us look to various issues related to the drought mitigation strategies. So, like um, there can be alternative cropping strategies say uh, if say if a particular area is um, always vulnerable to droughts then say instead of uh, high uh, water intense crops we can uh, go for low water intense crops. So, like that alternating alternative cropping strategies we can go soil and water conservation uh, we can do say soil conservation so that um, sufficient moisture will be maintained um, in the in the soil then water conservation and water harvesting so reduction of usage of water and then uh, uh, say uh, say uh, various measures like water harvesting uh, promotion of water harvesting techniques uh, so these are all examples for uh, say as far as the mitigation strategy is concerned and then um, we can go for emergency drought relief plans so, in all this uh, when we talk about the drought mitigation strategies, uh, the main objectives generally are to combat droughts, say to develop a national strategy for uh, drought preparedness in both the short term, short and long term aimed at reducing the vulnerability of production systems to uh, drought. So, drought is concerned there can be a short term effect and long term effect. So, we have to come up with uh, say when we are developing a drought mitigation strategy we have to come up with a strategy or we have to come up with a preparedness in both the long term and short term uh, uh, strategies to reduce the vulnerability say as far as crop product say reduction crop or the, the, the uh, say availability of water all those issues are concerned. 
Then second one to strengthen the flow of uh, early warning information to decision makers and land users to enable the nations to implement strategies for drought interventions. So, if we can uh, uh, come, come up with the early warning systems say in few months in advance. So, then the decision makers or the policy makers they can say they can come up with a certain decisions that will be very useful say in terms of uh, say uh, availability of food, water or any other measures are concerned. And then also say the, 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 the owners of the land say especially say wherever agriculture say uh, they can do appropriate go for appropriate interventions such that the crops can be uh, saved. So, that way the, the land users say if they can get appropriate um, warning systems they can strengthen the, 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 the drought related issues. Then third issues is to develop and integrate drought relief schemes and means to of coping with the environmental refugees into national and regional development plan. So, when we are going for development plans uh, either national basis or, or a regional basis. So, if the, some areas are especially drought prone uh, and then if there is a possibility say we can uh, give advance warning that there is a possibility of droughts, then uh, we can uh, look into say we can integrate the drought relief schemes uh, within the existing schemes. So, that uh, say uh, we can deal uh, with the, 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 the drought very effectively. So, that way uh, say that when we look into drought mitigation strategies, we have to look all these aspects uh, in a comprehensive way and then come up with appropriate strategies suitable for that particular area uh, say depending upon the various uh, say parameters like geographical or um, meteorological and uh, say agriculture related uh, parameters. So, now let us look say when we look into drought mitigation then what kind of commitments uh, say, say we have to do to, to, to improve the system say so we, we have to, to reduce the severity of the drought. So, in this slides we can uh, say some of the important points are mentioned like improve uh, say uh, land and water management. Uh, so, uh, say as, as far as drought is concerned uh, mainly it is mainly uh, say uh, lack of uh, av available water. So, the water availability is uh, reduced or there is no available water and then the land is affected. So, that way uh, we, we have to improve the land and water management. So, that is one of the most important aspects. So, when we look into watershed management, so uh, say it is always uh, since uh, watershed is hydrologic unit uh, scientifically based hydrologic unit. So, it is always uh, better to go for watershed based scheme. So, that will be more effective as we were discussing in many of the earlier lectures. And then um, say, say another aspect is the soil management. So, in uh, most of the drought prone area the, the crops or the, the vegetation is not getting sufficient so moisture. So, that way if we can do some soil management with respect to moisture availability then uh, say uh, we, can, we can effectively uh, deal with the droughts. And then promote agricultural um, management and provide uh, trainings. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, say uh, if you can shift to the, the, the crops which does not need much water, so that way uh, say agriculture water management can be effectively done, and that can be say the farmers can be given appropriate training so that they can uh, go for more scientific based uh, uh, irrigation schemes or say crop rotation or the appropriate uh, crop management. Uh, so, that way uh, we can promote agricultural management and uh, provide appropriate trainings. Then develop strategies for drought preparedness. So, um, uh, we can in advance as uh, say drought mitigation plans we can uh, say uh, develop appropriate strategies depending upon the, the various uh, issues for that particular area like uh, the, the socio cultural or the, the geographical or the meteorological say uh, parameters by considering uh, these parameters we can uh, prepare the appropriate strategies for the uh, drought preparedness. 
and then uh, say in all the cases we need uh, say wherever the area is drought affected we need uh, say large amount of financing. So, that way how the, the uh, central government or state governments or district administration can mobilize the finance or we say uh, some other time we have to help the farmers to deal such issues. So, how to mobilize the finance? So, that can be another commitment. Then uh, say most of the time say we can see that um, the drought prone areas say the, 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 the deforestation has been taken place most of the area or the vegetation cover will be much much uh, thin in those areas. So, we can look whether the possibility of afforestation or reforestation depending upon the areas say how we can uh, improve the existing forest or how we can reforest or we can say, uh, say put, put uh, uh, different types of plants which are suitable for that particular environment and then uh, go for reforestations. And then uh, we have to also look into minimum necessities of the communities. So, so uh, in a drought prone area say mainly the people will be affected with lack of water, food and um, other, uh, other basic amenities. So, we have to see uh, when we are looking to drought mitigation, we have to see how we can provide these kinds of uh, basic amenities. Then another issue is social issues say related to the, the say uh, due to us the, uh, the, the for especially the, the agriculture sector there will not be any jobs or the crops you have already destroyed due to the drought effects. Uh, so, that way people may, may say the labors may be migrating from one location to another location. So, these kinds of social issues also uh, we have to see uh, when we prepare appropriate uh, drought mitigation. Uh, commitment plans. So, now uh, say within this context as we can see that uh, drought monitoring and early warning is the is very very important aspect uh, to, de, to, uh, to have appropriate uh, drought mitigation plans. So, uh, that way uh, drought monitoring and uh, early warning system is very important. So, uh, uh, most of the time drought uh, say, say uh, is concerned it uh, say uh, the onset of drought will be very very slow process. So, typically a, a slow onset phenomenon is generally as far as drought is concerned. So, often po possible to provide a early warning of an emerging drought that is possible by considering various uh, hydrological, meteorological and other parameters. Early warning allows uh, for a shift from reactive to proactive uh, hazard management as far as that particular area is concerned. So, if you look into uh, various countries, then uh, drought monitoring techniques across the world, we can see that um, say various countries uh, use various norms as far as the, the drought monitoring or um, uh, early warning is concerned. Say for example, China considers um, uh, standardized precipitation index as we discussed uh, in our earlier lecture. Uh, so, they calculate the standardized uh, precipitation index to monitor drought occurrence whether there is any possibility of drought or uh, some particular area is uh, amenable to droughts. Then uh, if United States of America is concerned say instead of choosing uh, one particular uh, say drought in index say they use multiple climate indices and indicators. Uh, so, so, based upon various indicators they have developed an uh, advanced level uh, early warning uh, or monitoring uh, tools. So, that uh, by considering all these parameters or all these indices, but some of the indices which uh, we have discussed in one of our earlier lecture also. So, they use this uh, uh, or various indices to come up with um, uh, say uh, for early warning as far as drought is concerned. Then countries like uh, Australia is concerned same uh, that tries to quantify in terms of precipitation percentiles. So, that is what uh, say they use as far as the early warning is concerned. And then uh, African countries as per the, the FA of Food and Agriculture Organizations and um, other United uh, Nations um, uh, say um, organizations say they, they use a uh, system called famine early warning systems. FEWS net. So, this is uh, has been developed under the umbrella of um, uh, um, say uh, United uh, Nations uh, Development Schemes and uh, uh, FAO. So, this uh, say since African uh, in Africa many countries are uh, say, say many in many countries doubt is a common phenomena. So, that way uh, this system has been found to be uh, very effective. Then in Asian countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan and western parts of India. Uh, so, uh, say we 
we have got a um, early warning scheme called the South Asia drought monitor schemes. So, this uh, 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 SAD, SADM, uh, this is based on remote sensing data, drought related indices, uh, some of the uh, say indices like um, uh, standard precipitation index and then GIS. So, this also seems to be seem found to be uh, very effective. And then uh, say uh, early warning systems like FEWS net is mainly focused on Africa where majority of food security warning systems operate, but it also covers parts of Central Asia, Central America and the Caribbean. So, that way uh, say based upon say the various available um, say uh, drought indices and then uh, advanced uh, uh, tools like remote sensing GIS uh, and then uh, other hydrological modeling tools say uh, various warning systems have been developed and, uh, and are in effective use in, uh, in many, many countries. So, now uh, coming back to again to drought mitigation and preparedness measures. So, as far as preparedness is concerned say when we deal with uh, drought mitigation uh, say which can be either structural uh, measures or the uh, non-structural measures. So, the structural measures or physical measures uh, are actually uh, we are say directly implementing in the field uh, say as a, as a development of a structure or an engineering project. So, like um, appropriate crops, uh, sand dams, engineering projects etcetera. So, to deal with uh, to, as a, so to prepare uh, as far as drought concerned uh, say we can go for this kinds of structural or physical uh, measures. Then uh, non structural measures actually say it is mainly to deal with uh, the, the government policies, awareness, warnings etcetera. So, that is um, we are not implementing directly in the field, but uh, the policy or strategies will be developed and awareness will be uh, developed between the between the communities so that say this will be uh, very effectively implemented. Then as far as um, mitigation and preparedness is concerned uh, uh, say it is defined as uh, pre uh, disaster activities that are undertaken within the context of disaster risk management and are based on uh, sound risk analysis. So, when we are preparing the, the drought mitigation plans, strategies or the preparedness uh, we have to uh, make it uh, appropriate in an appropriate way such a way that it um, should be based upon the risk assessment or risk analysis. Say for example, water scarcity during the dry season. So, we have to analyze what are the problems and um, then um, say whether it is the lack of rain or the, the whether it is the, the soil uh, nature or the drainage systems or whatever it is. So, and accordingly we can identify solutions like say for example, some region we can have uh, say, um, say instead of surface water dams, we can have ground water dams. So, where we can have appropriate structure uh, say that that it will stop the, the, the easy flow of the, the ground water. So, that sufficient moisture will be there and what say even ground water will be uh, available. So, that way we can go for uh, say preparedness uh, as far as the particular system is concerned. And then um, say most important steps in lessening the effects of uh, drought through as we discussed are mainly the soil conservation and water conservation. So, soil is concerned say against say uh, soil erosion or say to keep the soil moisture as far as the drought is concerned and then water conservation is con considered uh, say to reduce less uh, to, to reduce the usage of water uh, in an effective way. Uh, so, that um, uh, say with the less water we can have better ag agricultural production. So, water conservation and then by protecting soil it is better able to absorb uh, rainfall or precipitation, but it can also help farmers to use less water. So, if more moisture is more, more, more soil moisture is available then farmers have to use only less water so that way water conservation is also possible. And then it also creates less water pollution by the pesticides and fertilizers uh, present in most uh, uh, farm runoff. So, that is another indirect benefit. So, through uh, soil and water conservation if we can reduce the usage of water then um, the water pollution problems due to the to the usage of fertilizers, uh, pesticides and others we can uh, reduce. So, as far as water conservation is concerned, say uh, we are looking for say reduction in usage of water. So, like um, public use is often regulated, so that um, the usage of water is uh, reduced. Then uh, water conservation devices like uh, low flow toilets, 
uh, as far as domestic usage is concerned, shower heads and then washing machines. So, for that particular area, particular communities are concerned, water conservation is possible. And then wherever in, say the water is um, uh, not uh, po, uh, uh, say sufficient water is not available through rainfall, then uh, if the, the sea water, if the sea is nearby or coastal regions, uh, we can look into desalination of sea water as many of the Gulf countries are doing. And then uh, say another important aspect is like uh, water recycling uh, say uh, so that um, we can say recycle the water and then reuse it for various purposes. So, actually the next module is, module is on water recycling and reuse. So, there we will be discussing more aspects and then uh, rain water harvesting. So, like that um, say depending upon the area, depending upon the various conditions, uh, depending upon the 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 uh, the geographical areas or the 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 uh, social economic aspects we can have uh, various measures uh, as far as the the drought uh, mitigation is uh, concerned so uh, that way now when we look into drought mitigation so we have to see the how uh, we can protect the the ecological system so the the area from say the the water stress or the the uh, the, the um, as far as the total area is concerned say whether we can uh, say uh, manage uh, appropriate way. So, that way uh, when we look into drought mitigation we have to look into the protections like um, dams say we can have many dams and their associated reservoir supply additional water in times of drought. So, in, in drought prone area we can look the possibility of having more dams so that um, uh, we can store more water. Then we can also get rainfall artificially through um, uh, cloud seeding. So, it is an artificial technique to induce rainfall. So, that way another option uh, then uh, desalination of sea water for irrigation or consumption as, I, as we discussed. Then drought monitoring, so we can we have to monitor continuously uh, as far as the rainfall, rainfall levels and then uh, comparison with the usage level and then um, uh, say whether there is say with overuse or with um, misuse whether there is any possibility of man made drought like that. So, for example, say in a in a Gulf country like uh, Yemen say uh, uh, the, 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 the say they, they are using ground water for agriculture purposes. So, due to the overuse it has been observed that the ground water tables are uh, going drastically down uh, say since due to overuse for the cut crop. Uh, so, that way uh, say we have to do appropriate uh, interventions so that to, to protect the, the, the available ground water uh, resources and then uh, effectively uh, utilize it. Then uh, we have to go for monitoring of moisture levels like to help predict increased risk for uh, wildfires using uh, such metrics as Palmer drought index what we discussed in the last lecture. Uh, so, that way we have to see the monitoring of uh, moisture uh, levels. Then another important aspect is the land use as far as the drought mitigation and protection is concerned. So, uh, say as I mentioned earlier say uh, as far as agriculture is concerned uh, say instead of uh, going for so especially the drought prone area instead of going for the, the uh, high uh, water intensive crops. So, we can go for low in water intensive crops and then we can go for crop rotations and then uh, uh, we can minimize the erosion and allow farmers to plant uh, less water dependent crops in drier uh, or the drought years. Then uh, also we can go for outdoor water use restriction like regulate use of sprinklers, uh, horses or um, uh, buckets on outdoor plants then uh, filling pools and other water intensive home maintenance tasks. So, that this way uh, we can conserve the water. Then as we discussed the rainwater harvesting is one of the most in important aspects as far as the, the uh, mitigation measures and protection is concerned. So, uh, rainwater harvesting is collection and storage of rainwater from roofs or other suitable uh, catchments. So, that uh, that can be either directly utilized or we can recharge back to the aquifer systems. Uh, then recycled water say like waste water sewage treated and purified for uh, reuse say either for domestic purposes or the gardening or the agriculture purposes. 
and then also we can look to the possibility of transvasement like uh, building canals or uh, redirecting rivers as massy atoms uh, at irrigation in drought prone area. So, you can see that um, uh, in a state like Gujarat, so we can see that the, with respect to this uh, Narmada uh, river canal system. So, now uh, Gujarat state is taking the, the water um, uh, say uh, from the Narmada river or the, the its canal systems to the drought prone areas of Kach and other areas. So, that um, uh, the, the through these kinds of um, uh, by building canals and water transfer. So, we can uh, mitigate the, 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 the drought or the we can reduce the, the effect of uh, droughts in an, in an effective uh, way. So, then uh, say as I mentioned uh, say uh, in uh, drought prone areas say if the, the um, uh, rainfall is uh, less. Uh, so, then we can go for uh, say uh, instead of if and especially we can see that uh, as a consequence of drought prone droughts or the, the, the most of the areas the evaporation will be much much more. Uh, so, that way if we store the water in, say, in surface reservoirs then what happens more water will be lost through evaporation. So, that way now uh, we can even go for uh, dams called the ground water dams. So, groundwater dams uh, say we can store water underground uh, rather than on the surface. Uh, so, say for example, uh, in China say under the scheme called Mother's uh, Water Cellar, uh, the project launched in August 2000 by China, China Women Development Foundation. Now, uh, say many areas, drought prone areas they are providing water through these schemes. Uh, so, this provides a readily accessible portable water for about 1 million people in rural China by developing this so called uh, groundwater dams. So, that way that kind of changes are possible. And then uh, also we can go for percolation tanks say so percolation tanks actually um, say we can use for temporary storage of water and that also act as uh, ground water recharge to the aquifer systems. So, so, that way the water will be available uh, uh, say. So, this percolation tanks have, have been used effectively in many parts of western India like in, uh, in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Rajasthan. Uh, say, uh, so, th this has been the source of water for 15 million farmers uh, in uh, semi arid uh, ba basaltic uh, pl pl plateau in, uh, in western India. So, that way uh, as far as uh, mitigation preparedness is concerned, we can uh, go for groundwater dams, percolation tanks and many other schemes depending upon the, the geographical conditions and uh, the, the area. So, this groundwater dams are concerned. So, actually this is a structural measure. So, you can see that uh, say this is how a groundwater dam is constructed. So, this is the, the structure we are building. So, this is the ground surface and uh, this is the, the river bed level. So, we, we are constructing uh, below the ground uh, like this uh, and uh, uh, these are the structures that intercept or obstruct natural flow of groundwater and store water underground. So, the basic principle is uh, instead of storing the water in surface reservoirs, water is stored in underground. So, there, there is no possibility of uh, contamination and then uh, we can reduce the operation problems uh, and then there is no problem of submergence of land. So, this is one of, one of the, the structural measures which has been found to be uh, uh, very effective. So, this groundwater dams can be like a subsurface dams. Uh, so, this is a subsurface dam. So, this here we intercept or obstruct the flow of an aquifer and then uh, reduces uh, the variations of levels of uh, groundwater table. Uh, upstream of the dam and it is built entirely uh, under the ground as uh, shown here. And then also we can have sand storage dam say like it is just um, uh, the, the, the if this is the ground surface and this is the river, river bed then it can be uh, just like, uh, like this. So, this is constructed above the ground then uh, sand and soil particles are transported during periods of high flow and are deposited here and are allowed to deposit behind the dam. Uh, water is stored in this soil deposit as shown in this figure and uh, uh, say, so this is actually sand storage dam constructed layers to allow 
sand to be deposited and final material be uh, washed downstream. So, this become a good storage as far as the, the water is concerned in that particular area uh, say for the uh, drought season. So, that way uh, we can have um, say various schemes, um, uh, structural measures, uh, of course, watershed various measures which you are discussed obviously will help and then uh, some me measures like groundwater dams or percolation tanks. So, these are all some of the structural measures as far as the uh, drought mitigation is concerned. And then uh, some of the other uh, say technology for drought reduction or drought mitigation includes like um, field uh, agriculture technology uh, like a straw or a plastic film mulch then conservation tillage and rainwater harvesting. Uh, then water saving technology such as um, uh, hole irrigation and then uh, and the, the surge flow irrigation, uh, micro irrigation, drip irrigation. So, here all what we are trying to do is uh, we are going for effective water management so that um, uh, we are trying to use less water for agriculture purposes. Uh, so, that way uh, this field agriculture technologies uh, helps very much uh, to deal with the, the drought so that we can uh, reduce the uh, effects of droughts. Then uh, water saving technology say like uh, drought resistant and water saving uh, technologies say uh, we can even have the crops which can which are uh, which can um, say resist the drought to certain extent and uh, save the water. Then for preserving soil moisture and reducing crop transpir uh, transpiration we can use certain chemicals and mix with the soil and then uh, that way we can save the, the water. And then water storage cellar, sea water desalination, then uh, wastewater treatment or say water recycling and water use, uh, reuse. Uh, so, all this uh, uh, say including the rainwater harvesting uh, say and the storing in the water cellar uh, say. Uh, so, these are some of the, the techniques, technologies which we can uh, use uh, say for drought reduction and that way we can mitigate the, the, the droughts. Uh, so, now uh, say uh, some of the other techniques uh, or technologies for drought reduction include the development of drought plans or the, the or reporter on uh, drought impact. So, say this is say high end uh, technical technologies like software based technologies. So, we can uh, say based upon the various indices which we discussed in the last lecture, we can have drought monetary index on the national and global basis. And then uh, this can be effectively um, uh, used uh, say depending upon the index we can come up with uh, the, the reduction measures. So, say for example, in China say they have implemented uh, Beijing climate uh, say Be Beijing climate center has implemented China meteorological administration uh, say they have come up with um, uh, several uh, routine products for China and the globe are produced on a daily basis from real time station based and satellite uh, derived data. So, they come up with um, uh, the, the monitoring then warning and then uh, say uh, this uh, Beijing climate center uh, say they come up with uh, various measures as far as drought reduction is concerned and this uh, say they are giving not only uh, for China, but on global base also. Uh, so, that way the modern technologies also we can utilize effectively for uh, drought reduction. So, now uh, say uh, we were discussing about the drought mitigation aspects and uh, uh, we can see that um, uh, say as far as uh, drought is concerned the its consequences we have already discussed, but um, let us look what are the important sectors uh, which um, uh, will be affected by the drought or the impact sectors um, where we have to look into the mitigation actions. Uh, so, when we look into mitigation actions, uh, if we can classify the, the impact sectors, uh, then um, accordingly we can go for the, the drought mitigation. So, uh, we can classify into 11 impact sectors as far as the uh, drought mitigation is concerned. Some of the important uh, impact sectors are uh, uh, mentioned here in this slides. First aspect is water availability. So, um, we have to see how we effectively we can uh, utilize uh, say uh, the, the various schemes so that water availability can uh, be improved uh, for that particular area. Then uh, the municipal water say how we can effectively uh, conserve or how we can effectively improve the system. 
then water shortage or conservation activities so as we already discussed whether we can go for water conservation or water recycling or reuse then agricultural and industries are concerned um, same how effectively we can use uh, same deal with the demand management then uh, another important aspect is uh, public information and education so um, if the people are known, knowing uh, how to reduce the water usage or how to deal with the droughts so public information and uh, education will help to the reduce the effect of drought or drought mitigation and then uh, so the particular area is concerned how to uh, deal with the fish or wildlife uh, preservation is concerned uh, so what what kind of impacts will be there and then corresponding what kind of mitigation action can be taken then uh, health issues say in the drought prone area so there will be the water stress or the, the 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 people may use the polluted water all those issues will come so health sector is concerned say how uh, we can go for the the mitigation actions and then commerce and tourism or economy so if the particular area is drought prone or the drought is occurring for few years then it the, the its tourism potential will be reduced its economy will be shattered so that way we have to see the impacts then uh, wildfire protection forestry and public lands so we we can see that in many of the drought drought prone areas wildfire um, is a, a major problem so how we can protect the the vegetation from the fires and how we can um, manage the forests and the public lands and then uh, how we can meet with the energy requirements for the people and then how we can deal with the, the various social issues. So, like that say when we look into uh, drought mitigations, uh, so what kind of action can be taken with respect to these 11 impact sectors. So, these are some of the important impact uh, sectors uh, where we have to see the, the drought mitigation uh, plans. Then uh, say as far as mitigative strategies or mit drought mitigation is concerned, say we can uh, say classify or we can divide into nine categories. So like so these categories are listed here. First one is assessment programs. So as I mentioned, we have to assess say say uh, whether the drought is going to set in and then what will be these effects. So that way assessment programs and second one is legislation and public policy. So for the drought prone area to have to deal with the droughts, what kind of measures? So the 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 uh, state or central governments can come up with the legislation and then uh, there can be public uh, policy documents so which can be uh, effectively utilized. So like uh, say for example, government of India has made a national disaster management uh, action plans accordingly. They have come, come the drought. Um, uh, mitigation uh, um, uh, plans. So, that way that kind of plans which is available now as a document. So, that will help uh, to have um, uh, say um, uh, a public policy uh, with respect to the, 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 the drought situation. Then uh, how we can um, say augment the water supply then uh, public awareness and education programs. So, this is very important the public should know whether there is any possibility of drought and how to deal with these droughts. And then technical assistance, what kind of technical assistance can be given uh, to the people uh, uh, with respect to say for example, land management, water management or um, uh, crop management like that. Then demand reduction and water conservation programs, so how to reduce the, the, the water demand and then uh, what kind of uh, conservation programs, water conservation programs can be implemented. Then uh, what kind of emergency response programs are possible. Then uh, water use conflict resolution, so especially when the availability of water is reduced, there will be a uh, number of conflicts between the communities. So, how to deal with uh, uh, these kinds of uh, conflicts, so water use conflicts. And then uh, drought uh, contingency plans, how to come up with uh, uh, contingency plans which will be which we have to uh, deal. So, now as far as legislation and public policy is concerned. So, uh, the, the uh, um, concerned government can come up with the specific actions plans like uh, we can prepare um, position papers for legislature or uh, public policy issues. Then we can examine statutes governing uh, water rights for possible modification during uh, water shortages. Then uh, we can pass legislation to protect in stream flows. Then we can pass legislation providing uh, guaranteed low interest loans to the farmers. Then we can go for uh, impose, we can impose limits on urban development. 
So, like this uh, various uh, legislative measures or public policies are possible uh, as far as the the drought impacts or the, the, the various governments can come up with um, uh, uh, various uh, measures. So, now uh, let us look into what are the important challenges uh, when we uh, deal with the drought monitoring is concerned. So, here some of the important <laughs> aspects as far as the challenges of drought monitoring is concerned here I have listed. Uh, like uh, meteorological and hydrological aspects. So, as we have seen the drought is concerned it can be meteorological drought or hydrological drought mainly. So, with respect to data networks um, say the, the data availability will be inadequate. So, we have we have to have more uh, density stations or uh, the density of stations can be improved. So, that um, we get better data and then uh, we can go for uh, better uh, warning systems or better predictions. Then uh, data quality is also a problem because of missing data or an inadequate length of record. So, this is same uh, we have to um, continuously check the data quality whether it is good data or whether it is any missing data like that. Then high cost of data limits their application in drought. So, uh, same uh, the data should be avail available cheaply so that um, the various agencies can come with uh, various monitoring schemes. Uh, then um, say monitoring or for monitor, drought monitoring, drought preparedness, uh, mitigations and res responses. Then information delivered through uh, early warning systems is often too technical and detailed so that that limits its use by decision makers. So, we have to come up with uh, the plans which are simple and which are quite informative and then which can be easily uh, implemented uh, in, the, in, the, in the field. Then we can look into uh, various forecasts. Uh, forecasts um, say are often uh, unreliable on the uh, seasonal uh, time scales and um, lack um, specificity, then reducing their usefulness for agriculture and, and uh, other sectors. Then, as we discussed, uh, the possibility of droughts, drought uh, indices, uh, we can uh, we can have appropriate uh, drought indices. Um, so, that th this uh, so if, we, if the, the droughts indices are not made appropriately then uh, that may be inadequate for detecting the early onset and the end of drought. So, that way uh, we have to see that for particular area say particular types of uh, say uh, suitable drought indices uh, we have to come up and maybe not only one index, but maybe more indices uh, may help uh, to come up with um, uh, say appropriate uh, say drought monitoring. Uh, systems. So, that way uh, we have to plan or we have to uh, say deal with the, the, the uh, drought monitoring. So, these are some of the, uh, the challenges as far as the drought monitoring is concerned like um, meteorological hydrological data availability, then uh, high cost of data, then say the information passage, then forecasts and uh, then uh, say the, the appropriate uh, drought index so which we have to uh, deal. So, that way uh, uh, so these are some of the challenges as far as the drought uh, monitoring is concerned. Then uh, say drought monitoring system say uh, when we deal with uh, drought warning and monitoring. So, we should uh, we, sh we have to uh, say integrate this drought monitoring systems uh, say couple, uh, couple so that um, uh, say with respect to climate, water and soil parameters and socioeconomic indicators. So, whatever the, the, the say drought index we are using or the, the drought monitoring schemes or systems we are using. So, we, we may have to uh, integrate with respect to the, the the, uh, the, uh, the climate predictions or the water availability or soil parameters or socio-economic uh, indicators. So, for fully characterizing the drought magnitude uh, spatial extent and potential impact, so we, we may have to uh, integrate with respect to uh, various systems. And then we have to go for impact assessment uh, methodologies. So, the generally uh, say in the most of the drought monitoring, a critical part of drought monitoring is uh, say and early warning systems. Uh, so, uh, say we have to standardize it or these th things may not be widely available. So, we, we, we have to make the monitoring um, and the early warning system widely available and we have should have the standardized systems uh, so that the people can uh, effectively get the warnings or we can um, uh, monitor the drought appropriately. 
and then hindering impact estimates and the creation of uh, regionally uh, appropriate uh, mitigation and response uh, programs uh, we can generate, generate as far as the uh, drought uh, impact assessment or the drought mitigation is concerned. So, uh, these are some of the other challenges as far as the, the drought monitoring and then uh, impact assessment uh, methodologies are uh, concerned. So, now within this context uh, let us look to the, the uh, when we deal with the drought management say what are the major issues uh, we may have to deal as far as the mitigation uh, strategies are concerned. So, some of the important points I have listed here. So, like um, say it is always as we have already seen it is always better to have a appropriate drought monitoring and um, uh, warning systems. So, uh, so the, the uh, effectiveness of the warning systems or monitoring depends upon uh, various input data like uh, hydrological or meteorological or other parameters. So, that way this is one of the important aspects as far as the mitigation strategy is concerned. And then judicious use of surface and ground water. So, for a particular area, especially drought prone area, whatever available water, say surface or ground water, we have to see that. So, this available water is judiciously used so that uh, say we can meet the, the demand in such a way that the drought is severity can be drought city severity can be reduced. And in a drought prone area, so we can go for artificial say rainfall like uh, through cloud seeding, we can induce more um, uh, clouds to rain so that we, we, we can have more uh, uh, precipitation. Then uh, say instead of uh, flooding and other kinds of irrigation systems, uh, we can go for uh, micro irrigation systems. Then uh, say uh, we, we can say after the harvesting of that particular area of say soil management is concerned, uh, we can go for post harvest management so that um, uh, soil can maintain the, the moisture. Then the nutritional aspects of food security uh, say as far as the people or the, 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 the communities are concerned, we have to see the nutritional aspects are uh, maintained as far as their food uh, security is concerned. Then uh, like water conservation, storage structures, management, so like um, the structural measures what we can adopt as far as the mitigation strategies concerned. And then uh, uh, say as we have seen uh, afforestation, so the, the deforestation is a major issue say related to the droughts. So, how we can improve the, the forest cover, so that is the another uh, management issue. Uh, then uh, say the, the drought prone areas most of the farmers are affected due to the crop loss uh, due to the drought uh, onset of the drought. So, uh, whether the government or whether the various insurance companies can provide appropriate crop insurance and then uh, how we can um, build the capacity of the, the communities of the people. Uh, so, that uh, uh, capacity building and community participation can be effectively uh, utilized as far as the, the drought um, management is concerned. And then uh, relief responses uh, say uh, uh, relief and responses. So, uh, once the drought is set in so, uh, say uh, how we can give relief to the people through either monetary terms or food or the, 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 the various uh, measures how we can implement, implement as far as the drought prone areas concerned. So, how the, the system is responding to the systems. Uh, so, this way we can see that public distribution system can be uh, maintained in those areas so that uh, people get sufficient um, food and um, other supplies. Uh, so, that way uh, uh, the, the concerned uh, state or central or uh, uh, district administration uh, they can have appropriate guidelines. So, that will be very useful to deal with uh, appropriate uh, uh, so to, uh, for appropriate drought management plans. So, in a nutshell we have to develop appropriate drought management plans or guidelines by considering the various issues, various aspects uh, as far as the, the drought mitigation is concerned. So, before closing uh, today's lecture, uh, let us uh, have a brief discussion about uh, a case study. So, this is about the, the drought analysis in Rajasthan. So, the, the case study data are taken from uh, the, the technical report by M. S. Rathor entitled uh, State Level Analysis of Drought Policies and Impacts in Rajasthan, uh, IWMA 2005, uh, working paper <coughs> 93. 
So Rajasthan is one of the largest states of India and then the area is about um, uh, 342,000 square kilometer, about 10 percent of um, the total area of India and population is about um, 56.5 million or the about 5 percent of the total population of India. But as far as water is concerned, it is an arid and semi-arid region, only 1 percent of the India's water resources is available uh, in Rajasthan state and then this is an economically backward state. So, as far as climate of this uh, state is concerned, uh, the, 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 uh, it is mainly arid to subhumid area and uh, the average rainfall is uh, about 574 millimeter and uh, this also drastically uh, varies from um, one location to another location. So, in western Rajasthan, uh, it is um, less than 100 mm and uh, other areas uh, slightly more. So, that way the, the rainfall is distributed, the average rainfall. Then the Rajasthan about 50 drought, uh, drought years are identified in the last century. Uh, so, uh, and a detailed further analysis showed that in 9 out of 112 years where none of the districts in the state uh, affected by droughts. So, only 9 years out of the 112 years uh, say there was no drought, but all the other years uh, in one or another area there were droughts. So, every, that way we can say that every year some parts of Rajasthan is affected by drought and state considers drought as a transient phenomenon even though so most of these the areas are drought prone but the state administration is considering still the the drought as a transient phenomenon but that is not the case this analysis shows that all the years most of the years the some or other area is drought prone so that way um, so the state government presently has only short term plans or relief measures but that is not the solution we have to look for long term plans and what are the causes and how we the system can be uh, improved so according to this uh, uh, the the reference paper by uh, uh, Rathor, the drought index they have calculated by using this formula p minus x by s d where p is the annual precipitation x is the long term uh, mean and uh, s d is the standard deviation so accordingly this drought index they have derived and classified into four when di is uh, less than or equal to minus uh, 0 0.1 then uh, we, they call it as light drought and when uh, drought index is less than or equal to minus 0 0.2 they call it as moderate drought and when it is di is less than or equal to 0 minus 0 0.5 severe drought and when di is uh, less than or equal to minus 0 0.8 uh, very uh, severe uh, drought so that way uh, say uh, they have defined uh, say the the uh, drought situation in rajasthan by using by analyzing 100 years of data of the last century. So, that way they identified that 48 out of 102 years were drought years um, in Rajasthan and chance of occurrence of meteorological drought in the state is about uh, 47 percent. But of course, as we discussed uh, due to the, the geographical and various other parameters, so the, the pattern is varying from one location to another location. So, that way the area, the Rajasthan is vulnerable to drought, both uh, low income and middle income households are most vulnerable and the indicators are like a forced migration, borrowings from the various agencies, food shortage, change of occupation, forced unemployment, then uh, falling health conditions, etcetera. So, these are some of the vulnerability analysis done by the, the, the uh, presented in this paper by Mr. Rathor. So, uh, we will say the frequency and intensity of drought in districts of various districts have been done for the for 1901 to 2002. Say on a region basis, the number of years with the drought of different intensities like western region very severe was about 12 years, uh, severe was 12 and moderate was 11 and light was 11. So, that with the percent of all drought years in the period is about 45. Northeastern region about 12 very severe, uh, severe is 8 and moderate is 11, light um, uh, drought 16, so 46 percent. And southern region about 10 very severe and uh, years, so severe years 12, moderate 9, light 12 and so that way 42.1. So, that way all Rajasthan uh, say to us identified that um, say for this period of analysis. 10 years uh, were very severe uh, and then uh, uh, severe years about 10 and then moderate 15 and light 13. So, 
So, that way 47 percent they have analyzed. So, this dot perceptions and uh, perceptions and impl implications as far as this Rajasthan is concerned, it is perceived as gripping phenomena uh, on set and then difficult to identify, viewed as transient phenomena and direct impacts like a withering of crops, dry watering points, reduced forage for livestock, etcetera. So, these are all obvious in the Rajasthan area. And then uh, say uh, drought impacts are concerned, annual strikes of drought impacts in Rajasthan, uh, it has been presented here say for some of the years, you can see that um, district affected say the percentage wise, human affected percentage wise, then uh, livestock population affected percentage wise, flood uh, grain production index. So, that we can see that this is phenomena is say, if, say it is varying with respect to years, varying with respect to uh, space. Then in the impact of drought in Rajasthan is concerned say, say for example, year wise 88, 1980, 1998, 99, 2000 like that. So, the uh, with respect to rainfall deficiency, then crop damage, population affected. So, all these are uh, listed here as given by the in this paper. So, we can see the, the impacts of droughts. So, say for example, in 2002 about 40,490 villages were. Uh, affected uh, due to the, the droughts in Rajasthan. As far as the drought management is concerned, uh, say the state government has um, uh, say instituted uh, say drought management plans, uh, task force and committees, drought monitoring and early warnings uh, say uh, have been now installed with, by, by, with the help of Indian Material Department, weather watch group uh, based on rainfall data, water yeah. levels in reservoirs and crop prospects. Then drought mitigation programs like rural development programs, infrastructure programs, watershed development schemes like national watershed development program, then integrated watershed development program like that. Then drought prone area development program, then desert develop, uh, development program, then employment generation program, rural poverty elevation program. So, like that a number of schemes have been uh, developed um, uh, by the state governments with the assistance of central government. So, they of course, this schemes are, are found to be very effective in many areas, but still say now as these are all some of the short term measures we can say, but uh, the state is not thinking in terms of long term measures which are very uh, essential uh, for this kinds of since the drought is recurring and uh, say about 47 percent possibilities there in any of the area of Rajasthan uh, as far as drought is concerned. So, that way uh, they have to go for long term measures. So, to conclude uh, this case study say the main issues say we have to see the policy formulation and action like understanding the nature of droughts, then uh, modifying perception response to droughts and changing approach relief to mitigation of droughts, then identification of vulnerable areas and population, then impact of drought is both direct and indirect on most of the economic and social parameters as we have already seen and uh, then water availability is a key issue in many of the areas then drought monitoring and management we have to we should have effective management plans. Then rural development and poverty elevation programs are very essential which are on say we have to not only see in short term basis, but long term basis. Then efficient management of droughts depends on the organization structure and policies of the of the state. So, that way uh, we were discussing about the, the drought mitigation and the short term plans and long term plans and what are the strategies uh, which are possible as far as the drought uh, mitigation is concerned. So, some of the important references used uh, for today's lecture are listed here. Then few questions before closing the lecture. So, tutorial questions critically study the prevention, preparedness and mitigation for drought management as suggested by national disaster management guidelines. These details are available in this website. Study the necessity of capacity development, relief and responses for drought management. So, you can do this based upon this report. Then a few self evaluation assignment questions, illustrate components of drought mitigation plans, describe necessity of drought monitoring and early warning, differentiate between structural and non-structural mitigation measures, illustrate groundwater dams and its role in drought mitigation, what are the classification of mitigation actions according to impact sectors, what are the challenges of drought monitoring. Then a few assignment questions, what are the important drought mitigation strategies, compare various monitoring and early warning systems used in drought uh, different countries, discuss drought mitigation and protection, discuss technology for drought reductions, what are the categories of mitigation strategies, 
comment on drought management and uh, mitigation measures. So, all these questions you can um, say answer by going through this uh, today's lecture and then uh, say going through various references given. So, in this module, uh, module number 9, we were discussing about the drought management. So, we have seen the, the problems of droughts, drought consequences and then uh, we have seen to how to analyze the droughts by using various indices and today's lecture we are discussing about drought mitigations, strategies and various plans. So, with this, uh, this uh, module on drought management is over. So, we will go to the next module in the next lecture. Thank you.